Welcome back to Inside Politics. Our guest this week is Nashville Mayor David Bradley. Mayor, you submitted your budget this week. It's a record $2.33 billion. As a part of that, you're increasing the amount of money that the city spends in debt service to pay That's off right. its debts, for, particularly for capital expenses, by 15%. That's now, right. one of your opponents, who is a council member at large, John Cooper, has been complaining that the city has maxed out its credit card. Is that right? Is that why we're having to put 15% more dollars in it? And how many dollars are we talking about? So the increase is $44 million in debt service this year. And uh, if you look at it by all kinds of different measures, we're, we're fine in terms of the level of our debt, but we have to make sure that we're responsible about repaying it. So are we cutting down the debt? Or are we just increasing it because the debt continues to go up because we build MLS stadiums and parks and all kinds of other things that, that cost money? Are we getting are we getting ahead on this or are we just barely staying even? So we're paying down the debt on a, on a normal scale now. Part of the increase this year came from a refinancing that took place during the recession back in 2010. And uh, but part of it is just through the issu issuance of new debt. So and there was a balloon on that on the refinancing. There was there, there was a balloon and on that. And we got the balloon. We're still uh, dealing with the balloon the, right, right now. I think. This was the last year, I, I believe, on that. So we issued $750 million of new debt last year. That was all uh, almost exclusively related to streets and roads and parks and things that we had done in the prior few years. And uh, we're on track to see our debt uh, loads come down over the next few years. You've got another capital plan you're going to give to the council in the fall after this budget is right. set. Uh, can we afford more capital stuff? I mean, do we have sure. to have a moratorium on that? For uh, we don't because we're paying off a significant amount amount every year when we pay our debt down. And uh, if you look at our GDP, or the total amount of property assessed in our city, uh, we are uh, staying at or below the total amount, the uh, uh, same percentage that we've had in the past. In your speech, you defended your $500 million affordable housing plan. You talked about the endorsements that you've gotten from uh, Senator Warren, who's a candidate for president, for the mayors from Washington, uh, from Boston, and from Atlanta. Atlanta. But Aren't those folks the kind of liberal politicians that like any kind of big government spending? Well, I think they are individuals who are confronting the same confront, uh, issues we confront here in Nashville, that if you want to maintain a city where the folks who built it over the last uh, decades and generations can uh, stay to live there, the city has to get engaged on maintaining housing affordability. And so uh, I believe their praise was, uh, was appropriate. You didn't uh, mention anything about private support for this. You you, mm -hmm. you had asked to challenge the, the, the private sector to come up with $250 million to right. go with what you're doing. Uh, are you not getting much response on that? No, we're getting a lot of response on that. Uh, so how the, come we haven't heard any announcements? Well, uh, I can't announce everything in one speech, but uh, we continue to work on that. The private sector is very interested. One of the issues with the private sector is that um, for it to be um, uh, the most fruitful, impactful um, investments, we have to have some additional infrastructure, financial infrastructure in place. Getting back to the Vanderbilt poll and the job incentives. Um, is that a tool you're going to continue to use if you're re-elected mayor, offering these things to Amazon and other people to, to bring jobs here and relocate here? Well, I, it, one of my most important uh, jobs is to make sure we have jobs. And so uh, we will look at each one individually to make sure it makes sense for the city. Now, uh, if, if they were prohibited across the country, that would be fine with me. But we cannot unilaterally disarm and say all the jobs should go to Charlotte or Dallas or somewhere else. Is Nashville attractive enough now in terms of our quality of life and everything that we don't need incentives anymore? I think we don't need the same kinds of incentives we we, we have needed in the past. But I do think as we look at jobs uh, and wanting to make sure that everybody in our city has a chance to participate in prosperity, we can't take it off the table. Those who we give incentives, those companies and corporations, shouldn't they at least be paying some kind of federal federal corporate taxes like Amazon is not. Well, uh, if I were in charge of the federal government, I would probably want to see us do that, uh, but I'm not. And uh, what we have to be cautious about in our city is making sure that as the economy grows and changes, that we have those growing uh, jobs in our community. And I think that's why Amazon made sense. Are you actively negotiating any job incentive deals right now? I mean, these things are... No. No, and you don't plan to have any between now and the election? Uh, I, I don't think we'll have any announcements between now and the uh, the election. Now you have a couple of other controversies in your budget about something one th the one to privatize the, the downtown parking system and also uh, sell the downtown energy system. Uh, you didn't mention much about the energy system at all in your speech. Is there a reason for that? Are you planning? You don't plan to move ahead on that right away. It was not mentioned at all in the speech. 
No, we we have uh, we are have um, awarded uh, tentatively or the original initial award uh, con um, uh, to uh, to a company, and we do intend to proceed with it. Now, just to be clear, the district energy system has been privately operated for the last 15 years. It's never been operated by the city. And you'll need not just Metro Council approval. You're going to need approval from the the people that receive the heating and cooling, and that means the state of Tennessee is That's probably right. going to have to approve it, right? Does that mean it'll have to go to the building commission? Does it have to go to the legislature? I don't think it'll have to go to the legislature, but I do think it will, the, the state is, is interested in seeing some changes to the contracts, and we're working with them in a positive way. Do you see any irony in the fact that your grandfather championed this whole system to be built back in the 1970s? Now, it had some environmental problems over the years, yeah. but uh, you would appear as the grandson to be walking away from it. Oh, I don't think that's the case at all. I think the, the, the sense is that it's not a core function of government anymore to maintain um, this facility. It was an integral part of the solid waste disposal system back in the 70s when my grandfather built it and we continue to dispose of solid waste in a different way. Uh, now it is part of heating and cooling the buildings downtown and that's not something that government is necessarily um, uh, the best at but this company is very good at doing this for the city. That's why we've considered it. Mayor David Brody is our guest. We're talking about the budget he submitted to the Metro Council this week and about the upcoming mayor's race is also in the background for that. I'd like to continue our conversation after this break.